Hi everyone! Recently, I don't have time or maybe strength for very challenging and complicated pictures, so I prefer to color something easy and relaxing. And very often, as a relaxing page, I select page with animals or birds. So today, while I will be coloring a page from Australian Animals by Selina Fenick, I decided to share with you some of my thoughts about how I prepare for coloring birds, which pencils I prefer to use, and so on. Today I will start to color Australian crane, brolga. I think that I selected it because in my country we also have similar plants and also we have cranes, so I felt some kind of connection to this page. And my first step when I need to color animals or birds is to find good reference pictures. Why I say good reference pictures? When I started to search for Brolga, several first pictures were of their usual variety. They are almost completely white with several patches of grey feathers on the back and on the wings and the only bright spot is their red head. But I wouldn't say that it's a very inspiring to color a white or a white and grey bird. To color something completely white it's challenging and to color white and grey it's boring. And I decided that I need more reference pictures. It's good that now we have so many beautiful pictures on the internet, many beautiful shots from various photographers. And some of them were really helpful. On some of the pictures, Brolgas had beautiful areas of slightly more yellowish feathers on the neck. And I really love this variety a little bit more, at least it's more interesting to color. And uh, when I started to look closer, I already uh, were able to find another colors on those good reference pictures. Apart from these areas of uh, beige and yellow feathers, I found that some of the feathers on the wings they have slightly blue-gray tint and that on the feathers we can find several shades of gray. Some of them are more warm gray, some of them cool gray and that's how I built my initial color palette by closely looking at reference pictures and trying to find not only basic color like gray and white but also some subtle additional shades which I can also use in my coloring. That's why I decided that I will be doing Brolga with this area of yellow feathers on the neck and that's where I started to search through my various pencils. If you love to color animals and birds, I would recommend to build your own collection of uh, muted colors. You will need a lot of various grays, brown, beige colors. And some of my favorite pencil sets for animals and birds are Darren Drawing, then a very surprisingly a black video set for black skin and also of course a various gray colors from prisma color sets especially french gray and cool gray so i look closer at the wings of and feathers of brolga and i decided that for the neck i will need a couple of shades from black widow dark skin set and they helped me to create this yellow beige color of feathers so color of these pencils is quite unique then my next rule i try to study uh, how feathers grow, direction of the grow and size, where they are bigger, where they are smaller. Sometimes it's not very necessary because feathers are already uh, drawn by the artist, like we have here on the wings. But on the body and on the neck of the brolga we don't have feathers. 
but if we look at reference pictures, we can clearly see this texture of tiny fluffy feathers. And I try to recreate it on the body of Brolga. So I try to study size and direction exactly the same like I do with animal fur. Direction of the fur grows and how long is fur on each and every part of the body. So when I colored the body of Brolga, I didn't simply cover the whole area with one color or with one pencil. I tried to draw this texture of tiny feathers. I did small pencil strokes, uh, small groups of strokes to indicate those small feathers, a little bit of gray on the white background. And for me it looks more interesting comparing to simply covering this area with just one color or even with color gradient. Next thing is uh, when I color birds and animals, I prefer to combine pencils from a various pencil brands. Sometimes uh, I prefer to use first my softer pencils like Prisma colors to cover a bigger area to put main color of the fur and then on the next step I prefer to switch to harder pencils, sometimes to polychromoses, sometimes to Arteza and then they harder, these harder pencils they help me to create texture either to draw fur or to draw feathers on the birds. Today I decided against using Prisma colors simply because I can't say that I love them on this paper and because I simply need to do grey feathers. So on the first step I tried with very light pressure to cover area with a light layer of grey and then pressing a little bit harder on the pencil I tried to add texture if it was necessary. necessary. Another rule, when I do fur or feathers, I really try to keep my pencils very nicely sharpened. Sometimes when I color landscapes, I don't care about tip of my pencils, prisma colors or polychromoses, but for fur and feathers, it's very important to keep your pencils sharp all the time. Next, when I color feathers, I try to look at the layers of feathers. You can see here on the wings that one layer of feathers lay on top of the other layer and even if feathers are almost completely white, still in the areas where top layer creates shadow on the layer beneath, we need to do a shadow slightly more grayish area and in such way your wing will have more uh, three-dimensional look if you indicate those shadows between layers of feathers. And also sometimes uh, I darken space between feathers in one row. Next thing I usually look at dark feathers, black or dark gray, and uh, very often uh, birds feathers even if they are black, they have some additional colors. Sometimes they have a little bit of blue, sometimes they have a little bit of greenish tint. When I looked at this Australian crane, I found that feathers have some blue-gray shining. And that's where one of quite unique colors of Mitsubishi Uni pencils was very helpful. It's Mitsubishi blue-gray and it's a little bit similar to Prisma color slate gray, but it's even more bluish, even closer to Prisma color periwinkle bloom. And I love to use it together with dark colors, black or paints gray, to create this shining in the central part of the feathers, where feathers slightly reflecting light and in such a way, I would say that feathers look much more interesting comparing to simple black color. I hope that you will see it when I will finish to color these beautiful wings. And the last thing which I wanted to mention regarding today's coloring 
is that when I need to color something white or light gray, I always prefer to use different hues and shades of gray to make my object to look more interesting. Imagine um, if I would cover all the feathers in just one gray pencil. It would be quick, but it would look not very realistic and it would be simply boring. If you look again at reference pictures, you can clearly see that some of the uh, white feathers have a little bit more yellowish look, maybe because of the sunlight or maybe feathers are slightly dirty. And grey feathers can have a warmer or colder shade. So that's why for areas where I supposed to color a white and light grey feathers, I combined. From polychromosis I took cold greys, lighter and darker pencils. I would also need some a warmer grey color. But you know that I don't like Prismacolors on this paper, so instead I grabbed pencil from Derwent Drawing. It's creamy, so it was helpful when I needed to cover the big area of feathers and together with harder polychromosis it really helped me to color big area of feathers on the wing really quickly and effectively. In the second part of this video, I will finish to color Brolga, I will color these plants, uh, and I will do a very simple soft pastel background. I decided against doing something very bright, instead I decided to do sky, maybe it's um, uh, evening or maybe it's uh, morning, but on the sky I will do color gradient from light orange to light pink and yellow and I will indicate sun somewhere in the right top corner. I hope that this very light background will help my Brolga to pop up on this page. Anyway, I am glad that I decided to return to this book. It was a very relaxing and when I finished to do Brolga, I immediately started another picture. You know that usually I prefer to do at least a couple of pages if I return to some of the abandoned books. So please watch the second part of the Brolga coloring and please watch the next video where I will be coloring beautiful bee.
Thank you. 